Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about how to set up a saltwater tank. Let me get in here. So this is going to be pretty much a basic setup. Uh, we're not going to get into everything, but this will teach you guys kind of how to just get it first set up and what you need to put in the tank. So the very first thing you need, of course, is salt mix. Now you cannot just go to the store and let's say you want to set up a 20 gallon tank. You cannot just go to the store and buy a salt mix that says this is good for 20 gallons, pour it in your tank and think you're good. Salt, the salt amount might not be the right amount for what you want. And different fish and different inverts need different salt levels. So you're going to need to get something called a hygrometer. Now this is a cheap plastic one, costs probably $7. There are more expensive ones. If you're going to be doing a tank that has corals or anemones, or other things that need exactly specific salt levels, you should probably buy a more expensive one. If you're doing a fish only tank, a cheap plastic one like this will be just fine. Fish only tanks, you know, fish are a little bit more um, easy on the salt level. They, you know, they can live in a little bit of a variety, but corals need very certain salt levels. So if you're gonna do corals, there are more expensive ones. I think they're called refract refractometers or something. They look more like a, like a doctor's tool, kind of. I don't have one here to show you, but that's more for a coral tank, and if you're doing a coral tank, there's a lot more setup, a lot more expensive, you need better lighting and such. With a fish-only tank, you can pretty much do it in a normal fish tank. Um, but with a saltwater tank, I mean with a coral tank or a reef tank, you're gonna need a lot better lighting, uh, a lot better filtration, more chemicals, etc. So let's just talk about a fish only tank, because most beginners that want to learn how to set up a saltwater tank, they're going to probably start with a fish tank with fish in it, and you know, if they want to expand later on, you can always add corals, and you can always change your tank with the fish in it to get it ready for corals, by adding on the better lights, by getting the right chemicals in the tank. Uh, and some of the chemicals are needed for fish too, but the corals need it more. So what you're going to do is you're going to, let's say you have a 20 gallon tank. Go to the store and buy 20 gallons worth of salt. Usually they'll say on the container what it's good for. This one says it's good for 50 gallons. Now, like I said, it's not always perfect. So what you're gonna wanna do is, if you have a 20 gallon tank and you buy 20 gallons worth of salt, I'd suggest pouring in about 3 fourths of your container into your tank, okay? Now give it a good, I'd say a good day. Uh, overnight at least. It takes a while for all the salt to mix in and get uniform throughout the tank. So give it a long time to mix in because your salt level is going to keep rising and you're not going to get an accurate reading until it completely dissolves and completely gets uniform in the tank. And then what you do is you take your hydrometer and you simply fill it with tank water. I'll bring this up next to the camera so you can see. Fill it up with tank water and then you put it on a level surface. So you put it on a table or something. And as you can see, it's going to go to a salt level here. Now if I get this up on camera, I don't know if you can read this, but mine is at 1.021. That's actually pretty high. It's not super high. The ocean is actually higher than that. The ocean's like 1.027 or more. But mine's at about 1.021, which is good for my fish and my urchin. If you have a fish only tank, you can keep it as low as 1.019, but really you want to keep it between 1.020 to 1.025. That's the best level for most fish and most inverts and even most corals. Okay, so now that you got the salt out of the way, let's pour this back in, not waste the salt water. So now that you got the salt level right, what else do you need in the tank? Well, of course, you need a sand bottom. Now, in a fish-only tank, some people do bare bottoms, uh, and that's okay, but I would recommend a couple inches of a live sand bottom. Uh, you'll get some beneficial bacteria that grow in there, and they help filter out your tank, just like the live rock we'll talk about in a second. So usually in a saltwater tank, you'll see live sand as the bottom, or sometimes it's crushed live rock which is the bottom, and it kind of looks like sand, but it's bigger pieces. So you're going to need either live sand or crushed live rock for your substrate in your saltwater tank. So you put that in, okay? And that you can put in before you add the salt in. It doesn't matter. You're just setting up your tank. Uh, but you got your salt level. You got your live sand. 
and then you need live rock. Now these are small pieces here, just to show you, but live rock is fairly expensive. It can be anywhere from $2 to $15 per pound, and you need a lot of it. You need approximately one pound per gallon. Now, different people say different things. Um, don't go under three-fourths a pound per gallon, and you can go all the way up to two pounds per gallon. Um, but about a pound per gallon is the normal. So if you've got a 20 gallon tank, you need 20 pounds about of live rock. And let's say they cost, you know, five bucks a pound, that's a hundred bucks for your live rock right there. So it is a little expensive. As you can see, I got some live rock in here, uh, right in the middle. And you know, some of my stuff isn't real live rock, but in the middle there, that's a nice big chunk of it. And I've got little pieces like this all throughout the back of the tank, which you can't really see. And then I used to have a sump also with a lot. We'll talk about sumps in a second. All right, so you need your salt water to be about 1.020. On your hydrometer, you'll get that reading. You need your live sand, you need your live rock, about one pound per gallon. Then your filtration on the tank. People will say all different types of things with filtration. You definitely need a lot of it. Um, a normal, let's say you got a 20 gallon tank, a normal hang on back filter rated for 20 gallons is not gonna do it, not at all. You need high water flow in your tank because you need your live rock, which is in your tank, it's doing a lot of the filtration in your tank. So you need water to be flowing over that live rock a lot. And it's gonna be doing a lot of the filtration, the biological filtration. So 20 gallon filter, also even the mechanical filtration in that, it's not gonna be enough. Uh, really the best thing to have is a sump tank. And I have another video on how I set up my sump. It's kind of an old video, so I might make a new one soon. Um, but a sump tank, basically, you have an overflow box on the back of your tank, and it drains down to a separate tank, which you fill with more live rock and types of algae and plants, and they filter your water more, and then you have a pump that shoots the water back up from that sump or filter tank back to your main tank. That's more advanced, and you don't have to have it. Uh, for a fish-only tank, you can do without it, but if you're gonna be doing a coral tank with lots of corals or lots of inverts, you're really gonna want a sump because you, you really don't want your corals dying because the water quality goes bad. So that's why I'm saying if you're a beginner, it's best to start with a fish-only tank and then as you learn, move on from there. You can add on a sump, you can add on you know, your re refugium, and so on. Your, your refugium and your sump you can kind of put together in the same tank if you want, or you can have them separate. A sump is really the filtration part with the live rock and the other types of biological media. The refugium is the plant part. You put algae and plants in there, and it helps take out the nitrate. Uh, the live rock will take out the ammonia and the nitrite. So I'm getting a little technical here, so let's go back really quick, back to fish only tank. 1.020 on the salt, pound of live rock per gallon, live sand in the bottom of the tank, and then we're on filtration. You can use pretty much any type of filtration. Um, like I said, a sump is the best, but with a fish only tank, I'm using a hang on back filter on my tank, which is rated for 30 gallons, and then I'm using a Fluval U4, which I think is rated for about 50 gallons. So I've got about 80 gallons of uh, filtration on my 50 gallon tank. I'd re really recommend having two times the amount. I really should have a little more. I'd recommend having about two times the amount. So if you've got a 50 gallon tank, get about 100 gallons of filtration. And make sure you've got lots of movement in the tank. I know you can't see it. Well, you might be able to see it over there. You can see all my plants are waving around a little bit. You want to have lots of movement. And I probably have to clean that filter soon and it'll shoot a little bit more. The more water movement, usually the better. I mean, you don't want your fish getting thrown across the tank, but you want lots of water movement, so that water, like I said, is going over your live rack and is providing the filtration that you need. Then, there's all types of Reef Complete is this brand, and here's Prime, but there's all types of chemicals that go into tanks. With a fish-only tank, these are less needed. Although I have an urchin in my tank, and I think he needs a little bit of uh, calcium and other things. But basically, if you're going to do a coral tank, going back to coral tanks, you're going to need to put supplements in your tank. Corals and lots of inverts like anemones and uh, 
urchins, they need certain chemicals in their tank that they, you know, will take into their body to survive. So they're going to just die if you just put them in your tank and you're not adding any chemicals. Now you want to make sure not to overdo these. you got to look at the bottle, make sure you do it correctly. But like this one adds in calcium, it maintains magnesium, and strot and stronatum. I probably said that wrong. Um, this one raises carbonate alkalinity, you know. They're all different, and that's why I'm saying you probably want to start with a fish-only tank. Because when you start getting corals, things start getting a lot harder. And if you just throw corals in your tank without having the proper chemicals, they're going to live for a week or two, and then they're going to die. And they're going to slowly just, you know, harden up and get black, and they're going to die. So I'd really suggest if you want to do a coral tank, do a lot of research on the type of coral you want to get, what they require in the water, because it's, it's not very easy. Once you, once you do it and you know how to do it, it's you know, not hard. It's easy to ma maintain once you know what you're doing. But there is a lot that goes into having corals. And I don't have any right now either because the lighting on my tank. For corals, you need very good lighting. And the lighting system itself could cost a couple hundred bucks all the way up to a thousand bucks or more, depending on you know, how big your tank is and what type of lighting. So that's why we're saying for the beginners, probably want to start with a fish only tank and you know you can add in some inverts you know like hermit crabs or you know the snails there's other types of things you can add in but corals and urchins anemones stuff like that anemones need really good lighting and urchins I think just need some chemicals so um, you know that's pretty much it it's really not that hard to set up a fish only tank you just got to get your salt level right get your live rock your live sand and uh, that's about it now when you set up your tank, you're going to want to let it sit with no fish in it whatsoever for at least a week. And then, maybe even two weeks. And you're going to want to monitor almost every day, I'd say daily, get some quick dick test strips. Or get a liquid testing kit, which is even better because they're a lot more accurate. But you can get away with, with the paper test strips. And what these things do, like I said, liquid's better, but you can get away with these. What these things do is you take out your little test strip, you dip it in your water, and then inside of here there's a key. You hold it up to your key and you check the level of everything. When you start a new tank, you're going to have an uh, ammonia spike, a nitrite spike, and then everything is going to go back down eventually and it's going to kind of level out. You don't want to put any fish in until your ammonia and nitrite go down to zero. They're going to spike just from that live rock and stuff being in there, little particles on them, you know, there's going to be some ammonia and nitrite spiking. So do not just set up your tank and put in fish the day after you put in salt. Even if the tank looks beautifully clean, that doesn't matter. Test your ammonia and your nitrate. If you get any ammonia or nitrate in your tank, it's going to kill your fish. Nitrate, they can live with a tiny bit, but you shouldn't have any. I have absolutely none right now in my tank. Nitrate is okay in small levels. You're going to get a little nitrate in your tank, but that's okay. Ammonia and nitrite, very bad. So you want to wait at least a week, probably two weeks, before you start putting in any fish, or they're going to die during that, that uh, ammonia cycle or nitrite cycle, and uh, they're just going to die. So you want to set up your tank, wait two weeks, keep testing, you should see your ammonia and nitrite go up, and then it'll level back out and go down to zero. And that's when you start adding your first fish. Never add a lot of fish at once. Every time you add fish, they're going to produce waste in the water. And when they produce waste, your ammonia and nitrite's going to go up. Ammonia comes, comes from waste. And then ammonia is converted via your beneficial bacteria to nitrite, and then a different type of bacteria converts the nitrite to nitrate. And nitrate is pretty safe for fish. Plants and algae will help take nitrate out of the water, and you get the end product nitrate out of the water also with water changes. That's why you do water changes, because your, your filtration will turn those bad chemicals into nitrate, which is okay for fish, but only in you know, some levels. If it gets too high, it's bad for fish too. It'll stress your fish and they can die too. So that's why you do water changes, to get that nitrate level down again. So about once a month at least, some people do it more, some people do it less, but I suggest at least once a month uh, to do a water change. 
from about 25% up to 40% at the most, depending how big your tank is. And you know, you can modify how often you do water changes based on how high your nitrate is getting. You know, if it's getting really high, really quick, you do them more often, but you don't want to be doing them, you know, every couple days either. So if you're if you're doing them every couple days, you probably have something wrong in the tank. Something's going on. Let's see. What else can I talk about here? Pretty much, I mean, I, I think I pretty much described how to start a tank. Um, like I said, don't put in lots of fish at once. You want to buy, you know, one or two fish at a time. The more fish at a time that you put in, let's say you go out to the store after your fish tank is good and you put in five or six fish, they're going to have produce so much waste that they're going to raise the ammonia. You're not going to have enough good bacteria to fight off that ammonia and turn it to nitrate, which is safe, and they're all going to die. So buy one fish at a time. Every time you add a fish, more bacteria will, will grow to counteract the waste that he's putting in the water. And then they'll level, they'll balance each other out. Then you put in another fish, and more bacteria will balance each other out. So it's easier for them to balance out when you put in one at a time, maybe two at a time. But don't go out and just fill up your tank with you know five, six, seven fish all at once very likely that you're going to have dead fish, maybe all of them, because you're going to have an ammonia spike. So be careful about that. Uh, feeding your fish, lots of fish uh, that are saltwater fish, you know, they love mysis shrimp. There's frozen krill, there's frozen silver sides. more out here. Okay, he went away pretty quick. There's frozen silver sides. The frozen foods are great. Uh, I really like the mice shrimp. They really enjoy it. I think she might just throw in a piece here while I'm talking. And uh, there's, a, you know, you can also feed depending on what fish you got. Just a flake food. This is just marine flakes. It's good for most types of the uh, fish. Uh, and then one last thing. Some fish require algae like yellow tangs, any type of tang really, and uh, some other types of fish. Algae you can get like in a box like this. Is it open? And it's just dry sheets of algae. You just rip off a little piece, kind of crunch it up, and put it in there. Or you can get clips. Uh, I don't have one sitting out here that I can show you, but it's just like a, you know, a clip. It's like you would see like on a magnet on a refrigerator or something and it's got a suction cup and you just clip a piece of algae, you know, like a one and a half inch square piece to the side of the tank and then your fish will come up and eat the algae off of that. Most of my fish uh, don't really need algae. I feed them the flakes. I used to have a tang which needed the algae, which is why I still have this. Um, but all fish are different. You can, it's not really like freshwater fish where you can pretty much feed the whole tank one thing. You can do that if you're careful about what you buy and they all eat pretty much the same thing. But you got to be careful what you buy and you got to really research all the different fish you're getting because there's a wide variety of fish in the saltwater world and they all require different things. Some require being fed twice or three times a day. Some require feeding once a day. You know, so I can't really go over all the types of fish and take days. But really do research on the types of fish that you want to get. And another thing, just because clownfish are really popular, clownfish, there should only be one in the tank. More than one, they'll often fight. You can have a pair, a male and female pair, if you want to breed, but breeding usually, you know, you gotta be more, you gotta really want to breed them to do that. You gotta really research how to do that. And I'm pretty sure a pair doesn't do good when there's other fish in the tank. So if you're getting a clownfish, like I have one in there, it's best to just have one. If you get two, they will fight. Many types of fish will mix, many types of fish won't. So you gotta really be careful, and I'd suggest you know researching online. Don't trust pet shops. I've been sold many fish with bad results because pet stores, even the one pet store I go to that's a marine fish only, they've given me bad information. And I've had fish kill each other in the past because they, they were said, oh yeah, they'll be fine. They weren't fine. Do research online. Go to a fish forum. Ask, you know, think about what fish you want in your tank and post it on a forum saying, hey, I'm starting up a new tank. These are the fish I want. What do you guys think? See what the people say back. People on the forums will get a lot of different inputs. 
and you'll get to like have some good uh, information there. So I think that pretty much covers it. Last thing I can show is this. It's a protein skimmer. Now this is a very small one. This is meant for a nano tank that's like 10 gallons or less. But you'll see larger sized ones of these. And what they do is they sit near the top of the water and they usually have some type of pump that runs them. And what they'll do is they'll skim debris off the top of the water and they'll collect lots of debris before it gets turned into ammonia. And it saves, uh, saves your tank a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of chemicals in there. It takes a lot of chemicals out and it's really good to have on your tank. So if you can, get a protein skimmer. I currently don't have one on my tank and my tank's doing fine, but it is, it is a really good device to have on your saltwater tank. So uh, I'd, I'd recommend researching these online or also going to a forum and asking which one's a good one for your size tank and you know which, what's a good price on them. But uh, protein skimmers will really help your tank uh, stay, stay balanced, I guess is the right word. So um, I think that's it. If you guys have any specific questions, feel free to let me know. If I don't know the answer, I'll try to look it up for you. And uh, hope you guys set up your fish tanks and have a have an enjoyment. Have an, yeah, what can I say? Have an enjoyable time with it. They're very fun to watch. Lots of different colors. They're really saltwater tanks are really fun. So get that set up. Be slow about it. Don't rush into it, like I said, and you'll have a good experience. So see you guys next time.